the long-awaited Filmic Pro version 7 is out, but with a new pricey subscription model, is the upgrade really worth it? What's up, I'm RJ Bakulo, filmmaker, comic book creator, and mental health ambassador, here to help empower you to tell better visual stories with the best filmmaking tips, tricks, and techniques. After a rocky and controversial last few months, the developers of Filmic Pro have finally released the much anticipated version 7 of their popular professional filmmaking camera app, a supposedly significant new upgrade with a revamped interface. But the big question is, does this new version actually warrant the drastic new payment method which has already alienated so many users? Don't worry, we'll tackle that elephant of a question soon. But first, let's look at what's new and shiny with this major release. So here we are now with the brand new interface of Filmic Pro version 7. And first thing that's new is we have a dedicated exposure and focus mode selector. So right here in the top left, you can click, you can set it on reticle mode, which is uh, how it was with V6. We have two separate independent um, reticles. Then you have center weight mode, which is brand new where everything is now targeted in the center for your focus and your exposure. And just like the reticle mode, you just tap to lock in exposure and focus. And lastly, of course, we have manual mode, where you can do everything independently and separately, like the shutter speed and ISO. What's also new with version 7 is we have all these new sliders here in manual mode. And so on the left side, we have the LV slider, which controls exposure of both shutter and ISO together, or you can control ISO independently, shutter speed and penly and even zoom on the right side of course we have our focus slider a great new feature with version 7 is this action slider which can be pulled down on top by clicking this little chevron here on the top and now you will have access to all this information on screen such as the iso your shutter speed what your white balance temperature is and also how many minutes you have left in your recording what codec you're shooting in and also what color profile you're using what's also cool about this new action slider is it's not just an information bar when you actually click on one of the settings it opens up a new interface element which they call quick action modals or cams for short and it's really nice, these cams. Like for example, here, when I click on the shutter speed on top on the action slider, we now have the shutter speed cam, where of course you can control whatever shutter speed you want, but has also all these cool new additional information, which are very particular to filmmaking, such as the shutter speed angle or shutter angle. Next we have on the right side is a new button called the function button or FN. And from here, if you hold it long enough, It'll allow you to choose what function that you would like to quickly access at any time. Whatever you think might be most useful or most used for you. And you'll notice here on the right side, the audio meter is much simpler. But once you click on it, it goes into the more detailed indicator where it shows what decibels and if you're peaking or not. By clicking on the microphone icon, you jump into the microphone cam. On the left side, we have the new camera picker cam. And it's really nice because it shows all this additional information. On the right side and the bottom, you have your analytics button. You can choose from off reactive, where it only shows you, say, if you change your focus, it'll go into focus peaking. Or if you change your exposure, it will go into zebras. And then you have dedicated zebra mode, pulse color, and of course, focus peaking. Then we go to the settings button, of course. It's a much simpler settings menu where they've consolidated other menus from V6 into one page. And there you go. Overall, the interface design is a welcome improvement, which apparently the developers worked on from the ground up. That was always my gripe with V6, like how the exposure settings, especially with the arc slider, was difficult to lock the exact ISO or shutter speed settings I wanted. But there are still a few things I didn't like with the new V7. Having a dedicated manual exposure control selector is a very nice addition, but every time I would set my settings, I would have the tendency to tap the main viewfinder area to close whatever quick action modal is open, and then accidentally switch back to center weight exposure mode, losing my manual settings I just set. Could be just a matter of getting used to and training myself not to touch the main viewfinder area, but that was the experience I was having. Though not really a big problem, but I thought it was an odd choice to have the zoom slider control on the left side bunched with the exposure controls when in manual exposure mode. Because when you're in center weight exposure mode, the zoom slider is on the right side. 
to make it more consistent design-wise, they should have just bundled the zoom slider with the focus slider, which I believe was how it was with V6. I did try to use the Filmic Remote app on a second device paired to my iPhone 14 Pro. I'm guessing the Filmic Remote app hasn't yet been updated to reflect the new changes in V7, since the user interface design on the Filmic Remote is still the same as V6. Sadly, the Android port of Filmic Pro version 7 is not as refined as its iOS counterpart. I haven't tested it on the latest Android flagships like the Samsung Galaxy S22 or the Google Pixel 7, but on my good old Samsung S10, some of the user interface elements uh, were a little out of place and there's other bugs like the shutter angle not being properly reflected in relation with the shutter speed and frame rate. Anyways, this has always been the case where the Android version of Filmic Pro has always been a mere shadow to the superior and optimal iOS version. The last thing that I didn't like about this new version 7 of Filmic Pro is of course its new pricing model. A lot has been said already about this controversial move, but for those who aren't in the mobile filmmaking loop, basically what was previously a one-time payment own forever type of app has now dramatically switched to a subscription-based app, where you are practically renting the app for an indefinite period of time. Now I don't particularly have anything against subscription-based apps, I'm subscribed to quite a few actually, but it's the actual amount of the recurring fee they're asking for that has rubbed many users the wrong way, including myself. Depending on your location in the world, the weekly subscription goes for $2.99 US dollars a week, or you can opt for the annual plan for less than $50 a year. For some, this is just the price of a coffee every week, but for many others, this is way too much, especially for an app that might only be used occasionally, not on a regular daily or a weekly basis. Does the new expensive price tag of version 7 justify the value we are receiving in terms of new features? Probably no. Apart from the overhauled user interface, there are actually no drastic headlining new features that distinguishes the functionality between V6 and V7. In their defense, one could argue that the new interface is more than just a cosmetic upgrade because it does improve accessibility and efficiency, which we all know is important to a film production workflow. But the only real new feature I recognized was the ability to shoot in super high quality, low compression, near lossless ProRes 4444, or even higher quality ProRes 444 XQ, which I guess stands for extra quality and is only available on the latest M2 chip iPad Pro. If you're on the Android side of the fence, you have even less features to look forward to in this new version. Personally, I use both Android and iOS devices, which means I would have to pay two separate subscriptions just to use Filmic Pro on both devices. Unlike with other subscription apps where you can use the same subscription on both iOS and Android by having an account login. Don't get me wrong, Filmic Pro is a world-class, top-tier, feature-packed professional camera app that has the reliability and well-deserved reputation behind it. But personally, I barely make a few short films and documentaries with my smartphone in a year, and they are typically passion projects, not paid client projects. So for me, I don't think I'll be getting as much value subscribing with its current price, and I'm definitely not paying double just to have it both on my iOS and Android devices. The question of whether V7 is worth it for you ultimately comes down to how you will use the app. Sadly, with this new pricing scheme, this app no longer seems to prioritize the casual, amateur, hobbyist filmmakers, or even aspiring student filmmakers who have next to no budget to realize their filmmaking dreams. This to me seemed like Filmic Pro's biggest user base, but many have already jumped ship for other cheaper and just as capable apps. But hey, if you do have the cash to throw around, go for it. Otherwise, a good tip is to just subscribe to Filmic Pro only on those weeks you plan to shoot your mobile film production. With the heavy features set and also the use of their latest marketing buzzwords, Filmic Pro are positioning themselves to cater for real professional filmmakers in the industry, as in those whose profession allows them to make money from using Filmic Pro. This not only includes Hollywood or independent filmmakers, but also documentary filmmakers, music video directors, and videographers who do events like weddings or perhaps even real estate videos. To be honest, I'm guessing this target audience is still a minority. When you think of it, how many feature-length films have been shot with Filmic Pro? I could probably count them on one hand. Documentaries and music videos might be more, 
But unfortunately, mobile filmmaking isn't yet widely accepted in professional settings like client-based videography. But we're slowly getting there. Netflix did recently release minimum video requirements and recommended settings in Filmic Pro when submitting projects shot on mobile. Another group this new Filmic Pro model is suited for are online content creators, such as YouTubers or Instagram and TikTok influencers and creators. Those creators who are monetized for the content can easily justify the price of Filmic Pro subscription for their production needs. This can also include online instructors and course creators, which is becoming a fast-growing lucrative industry in itself. Then there's also content creators who do specialize in the space of mobile filmmaking, where it's important to be in the forefront of these kind of developments. There's a handful of us, but again, I suspect these are still in the minority and are not the majority of the paying users of Filmic Pro. Now, I believe the real target audience Filmic Pro is catering to with a new pricing scheme are not just professionals, but working professionals in the mobile journalism field, or Mojos for short. If you think about it, who would use this app on a weekly or even daily basis all year round, more so than a traditional filmmaker? Who would benefit from this efficient mobile setup that isn't just used for gimmicks or aesthetics, but for real functionality and speed? Even with the recent integration of Frame.io, which allows a direct camera to cloud workflow, this is the kind of feature mobile journalists and news outlets need the most, with the quickest turnover of video content. When I was still living in the Philippines, many journalists and news media professionals over there were being heavily trained in this new workflow of using smartphones to record and broadcast the news. And I believe it's happening elsewhere in other countries too. Having an app like Filmic Pro would literally be a daily driver for them. And the subscription fee wouldn't be an issue at all since news media outlets and corporations would cover the expenses. And is already worth a relatively small investment in terms of the efficiency and delivery it brings. When you go to the official Filmic Pro website and look at the About section and their company values, it says that their mission is to empower storytellers with their accessible and powerful apps. Filmmaking for a long time was an exclusive profession that required years of training, expensive equipment, and industry connections. The mobile filmmaking revolution knocked down those walls because now you can learn online and train yourself. You can use minimal gear, in this case, your smartphone, and have the liberty and the speed of the internet to share your film across the world. For nearly a decade, Filmic Pro helped push many stories into the world and raised filmmakers out of ordinary folks like you and me. Only time will tell if they will indeed continue to be part of this mobile filmmaking revolution they helped usher. If you found value in this video, please give it a like or subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know in the comments below what you think of version 7 of Filmic Pro and what this pricing new iteration means to mobile filmmaking. If you're looking for alternative apps that are just as capable or even better than Filmic Pro, you can check out this video where I share the best professional camera apps available on Android and iOS. Until next time, reframe your mind.